Welcome back to Pseudo Sergeant. Hello, welcome back to Pseudo Sergeant. In this segment, we're going to do a continuation of the Raspberry Pi portable build. Last time, we figured out how to drive a TFT screen directly with the GPIO. In this segment, we're going to recompile the Linux kernel and enable the GPIO keyboard matrix module. Now, let's get to the terminal. Here's a site that explains how we can enable the GPIO matrix. As I studied this, I found there's an instruction that we can use to check to see if the keyboard matrix is already enabled. That's sudo mod info matrix keypad. If we get an error, then that means we need to recompile the kernel with it enabled. I'll demonstrate the steps how to cross compile the Linux kernel for the Raspberry Pi on an Arch Linux system. Here I have the program Kate open. It is a plain text editor with a terminal attached to it. I'll utilize the terminal to connect to the Raspberry Pi via SSH. I'm viewing a file with notes in the top pane and the terminal at the bottom is connected to the Raspberry Pi via SSH. We will need to download the cross compile tools. I'll update the environment path and add the location of our compile tools. We can echo a new path to our .bash rc file, which will add the tools path to the path variable. After adding the new path to the .bash rc file, it's necessary to source the bash rc file. That will refresh and update the path variable. We can view the path again to see the updated changes. Download the Linux source. This might take some time, so go write an email or drink some coffee or play pinball. Go call your grandmother, call your mom, wish her a happy birthday, make a sweet Valentine's card for your, for your sweetie, you know, that kind of thing. Bake a cake and then, and then come back, you know, after that. Again, keep in mind, I'm on an Arch Linux system, so your mileage may vary. We need to have the NCurses utility installed, so I'm going to install that now. Now, create the variable kernel to reflect the name of the desired new kernel. You could name it something else, but uh, um, I'm just going to name it kernel. From the Linux source directory, prepare the .config file. After preparing the .config file, I'm going to need to open up the menu config and select the proper modules to compile. Make the menu config and select the proper options. Enable the keypad GPIO matrix and enable USB drivers. Navigate to device drivers, input device support, keyboards, GPIO key matrix, save and exit. So I also realized that I needed to enable some USB modules. I'm going to go into the USB um, options here and check some of those. So now I'm going to go into device drivers and then scroll down to USB, USB support. And uh, I wasn't exactly sure which USB device drivers I needed. So I pretty much just kind of picked and choose and selected almost all of them. So we'll save, exit, and now we have the configuration file completed. So I just checked a bunch of USB devices to make sure that they're compiled in the kernel so that when I plug in USB hubs or anything like that, we don't have any problems with it. Now, let's start the compile. So now I'll start the compile with make arch equals arm, cross compile equals arm Linux, GNU abifin Z image modules, DTBS dash J8. So the magic argument in the sauce here is J8. The J8 flag enables multi-thread compiling to reduce compile time. Oh boy, that was so fast, cross-compiling on a 64-bit system. Um, next thing I'm going to need to do is take this newly compiled kernel and all the support files and transfer them over to the SD card. What I'm going to need to do is mount the SD card and then copy the files over. Let's do that. I have the SD card in the SD card reader. I'll type lsblk to list the block devices. I'll mount 4 slash dev 4 slash sdd1, which is the boot partition, to the mount point I have created in the file system. All right, now the boot partition is mounted and we can list the directory. I'll do the same for the root. Next, I'll install the modules with the make instruction. I want to make a backup of the stock image that came with the operating system. I'll do that and I'll call it kernel-backup.image. 
Let's look at the boot directory to see what we did. You can see here that we have a backup of our kernel now. Next, I want to copy the Z image to our boot directory. I'm going to name it kernel-gpl-matrix.img. That'll be the kernel that we want to boot into. Now I'll copy the compiled device tree files to the boot directory. Here I copy more device tree blob files to the overlays directory. Now I'll copy a readme file. Now I ls that directory just to have a look at the files that I copied over. Now I'm going to modify the config.txt file so that when the Raspberry Pi boots, it loads the modified kernel. I'll do this by adding this line, kernel equals kernel hyphen gpl hyphen matrix .img. That just tells the system when it boots to utilize that kernel. Now we need to unmount the partitions. Now I'll be able to boot into the Raspberry Pi with a new kernel and check to make sure that the module is loaded. This is what it looks like without the kernel module. An error is reported. Now with the new kernel, let's check the mod info keypad matrix. Look, here it is. Next, we're going to create the gplmatrix.dts file and compile it. Here's the device tree source file. The GPL rows and columns are important. We are able to determine these files by referencing the TFT connections. The pins to use are 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, and 20. Here's a reference to all the connections that we made. We have H-Sync, V-Sync, our blue connections, our red connections, our green connections, and then we have dark yellow and, and light yellow. Dark yellow is our rows and light yellow is our columns. In this DTS source file, line numbers 18 through 26 define the GPIO rows and columns to use for the matrix. The next section defines the key map. It has a hex code that relates to a column, a row, and a Linux key code that we want it to represent. The code of the input key comes from the Linux keyboard.h file or the input event codes.h file. Here's a Linux kernel.org GPIO matrix keypad.txt example page for your reference. So we set the keys that we want in this section here. Now I need to get this source file onto the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to transfer it with the Dolphin file browser via the FISH protocol. I'll also bring over this compile script that I wrote. Back in the terminal connected to the Raspberry Pi, I'll navigate to the boot directory. I'll cat the compile script so you can see the compile instruction. It compiles into the device tree overlay and puts it in the overlays directory. I'll put sudo into the script. Then I'll just call the script. The script will echo the instruction to the terminal and then compile the overlay. Now it's compiled and placed in the overlays directory. Now the device tree overlay needs to be added to the config.txt file. Now it's time to reboot and see if the button matrix is functional. To see output of the connected keyboard, I'll invoke ls input. It's part of the input utilities package and needs to be installed with sudo apt-get install input utils. With the input utilities package installed, ls input will list the devices connected to the GPL matrix. Now we can see the results of key presses with input events and the event number, zero. Now events happen when the key is pressed. So there's one final thing we need to figure out, and it was that the GPL kernel uh, matrix module was conflicting with the SDL library used to make the emulator. And we discovered that we could get it to function, uh, get, it, get them to work together if we created a UDEV rule. And let's go ahead and put that in. And after that, everything's gonna work just peachy. Now I'm gonna create a UDEV rule. I'm gonna open this file and edit it. So I'll put this line in there, system, input, all the stuff. I'm gonna copy it, paste it in there. Now this is the rule. I'm gonna save and exit. And uh, now we have our new UDEV rule. So now when the system reboots, this UDEV rule will be in place and everything will work as we intended. Okay, so that's it for this segment of Sudo Sergeant. We created a GPIO kernel matrix, loaded the kernel module, and put that together with the TFT screen, and now we have a Raspberry Pi portable. If you have any questions, comments, leave them at the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash pseudosergeant.